What is going on, guys? We are back with another video today in our Flyers Relocation Fantasy Draft franchise. It is week nine going against the Seattle Seahawks. Of course, we're not technically there yet. And I was thinking about making a trade deadline trade. Is there anyone we need to re-sign? Because if not, I don't think... Ooh. Jordan Mailata, though. Do we trade? Let's take a look at Jordan. Looking at our starting lineup, Jordan isn't actually a starter and he'd be a guy we let go to free agency, assuming we do have another season, which we might be able to sneak in before Madden 21, I think. Maybe, we'll see. Um, but, yeah, maybe we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll trade him. We'll trade him. Just like I'll trade uh, this video to you for a like and a sub subscribe. Yep. We traded Jordan Mailata for a fourth-round pick from the Jaguars, which I think is probably fair. If not, they won, or we won. Somebody won. No, uh, you know, breakout player. We're obviously in week nine now. We're going to do a little scouting. We're going to get our upgrades and move on again. You know, go against them, Seahawks. Two and five. Honestly, at this point, if they lose this game to us, I don't think there's a single chance they can come back and win the division, which, I mean, <laughs> let's be honest, we don't really expect that anyways. But yeah, yeah, maybe, right? Maybe. As far as player of the week goes, Aaron Donald back-to-back -back players of the week, but nothing else. None of our guys, unfortunately. Burke Irvin, almost 90 overall. This man is coming a long way. And honestly, seeing that rating it makes me want to come a long way. Uh, man coverage is really bad, but zone coverage is really good. And yeah, that's about it. I mean, I was going to try to trade for someone in the trade before the deadline, but... They're really, I mean, you look at this roster, which we'll, I mean, we should probably take a look at anyways. There's not really much that we can really upgrade without trading away major capital. Like, don't get me wrong. The interior of the line, right guard, center, is not super great by any means. Niang, he still gets beat constantly. His ratings are, are still a little iffy. I mean, you look at the defensive side of the ball, middle linebacker, Summers. I mean, there's some lower overall guys, just for sure. But to really make an improvement, because a lot of these guys are already young, it just wouldn't be worth it. So, no trade deadline play outside of, you know, gaining that draft pick from Mylotta. Time to go against those 2-5 and five Seahawks who are great. They just don't usually play it for some reason. Here we go. Flyers versus Seahawks. This is another nighttime game, I believe. Oh, that's beautiful. That is... Oh, it's, it's so nice. And we get to play now that the word is out. If you guys didn't watch our video on, uh, you know, what franchise teams were being, check it out, I suppose. But... You know, the Rams are going to be our online legacy franchise. And we're going to be seeing this Seahawks stadium a few times because, boy, is it a nice one. Definitely uh, a great game. Whether we win or lose against the 2-5 and five Seahawks, a great place to play. And uh, I'm excited especially for this nighttime game. Uh, obviously, uh, the offense has been playing outstandingly well. But we are going against a very good team, both sides of the ball. More so on the offense. Obviously, we know that. They're kind of stacked with just Mahomes. Mahomes, really. Dalvin is very hard to stop for us as well. Uh, of course, the Cardinals, a bit of a win streak. Four straight. We're on a five straight win streak. It doesn't take much for the Cardinals to, you know, be at the number one spot. All we have to do is lose, and I believe they're right there. They might be a half a game back because of the, you know, I would assume a tiebreaker. Uh, but overall, this is almost the perfect night for Seattle to make the comeback. I, you know. I don't know. Obviously, like we said, if they lose this game, there's no coming back. Two and six is too harsh. But the problem is this: uh, the Seahawks team, they don't like to air it out. And you know, you got a guy like Mahomes. Why wouldn't you let it fly? I would let it fly 24/7 out of 24. I don't even know what that means. Mahomes on on the field, a season of 17 touchdowns, three picks, 1,662 yards, pretty solid through, what, seven games, I believe, they've played? Definitely on par for that MVP-type season. And I can't remember, is this the second game we've played against them, or no? We also have way too many DBs in, considering they're about to run the ball. Can't waste the time out this early, though. Or Dalvin's slipping away, but he's going to actually lose a few. Good D, good work, you know, good swarming. Now we're actually set up for the run defense, which is ironic, because last time we weren't, we still stopped them. And they're going to try to run again. This time with a little bit more, actually a lot more success. And he's going to slip away. Steven's ankles were snapped there. I mean, you, I don't even know how, to be honest. I guess to be fair, in that situation, you wouldn't really expect a juke move. So I guess it makes sense that he, you know, got his ankle snapper rude. Little pressure. And D Dalvin's just going to outrun everybody. And he's breaking tackles left and right. 
I mean, he really didn't even look fast there, but he caught the edge. And once again, we accidentally choose too many DBs. Then again, last time, not even on a blitz, we pretty much stopped him immediately. That's not going to happen here as Jair gets lucky that uh, the guy runs right into him. Dalvin, I'm not sure why you didn't just run to the end zone there, buddy. Give us another opportunity. Mahomes yet to throw the ball. And honestly, why would you? This isn't even Dalvin, but he's still gaining yards to the 24-yard line. Peyton Barber bringing all the linebackers down. They are going to, of course, throw it short. Dalvin gains a ton, though. That's a six-yard gain? That is what I like to call in the professional business shocking. <laughs> I know. Insane, right? And insane it is as Stevens could score. He's very slow, though. Holy crap, Stevens. This is sad. Jesus, is that a DT running back? Okay, dude. That's... Yikes, because that's going to be a hold, too. Yeah, I mean, it's just not a good decision, simply put. It really sucks that I'm not able to jump into the ball there, but, you know, hey, whatever. Definitely felt like Metcalf should have at least had a chance to try and stop, you know, that from happening. Uh, tries to swap the ball away, cannot. Great curl play. Seattle, though, probably looking to go back to the ground game. They're absolutely addicted to it. Oh, maybe not. We really don't have many people on routes. And Josh Jackson drops a wide-open interception. Taking a look at that Seattle offense. Of course, we play them quite a bit. We, we usually know their line. Insane. You know, that's a really good line. Receivers, a little bit, you know, on the lacking side. Seems like Dante Pettis is finally healthy, though. Like, we almost never play against him. He's always injured, it feels. And then, of course, you got Mahomes and Dalvin, who are just monsters. Really good blocks, but obviously Pettis isn't going to be able to outpower Burke Kervin for long. Bringing the edge. Heat. We completely miss, and Gasicki has got room. He's still fighting to the 47. Lads, you want to maybe tackle today? No? Of all the games to not tackle, this is probably the worst one to do so because obviously specifically with a guy like Dalvin, he can really make you pay. And oh my, oh wow, what a play by uh, the rookie Hall. The man has made some sneaky good plays. As far as consistency, he's got the consistency of uh, toilet paper that's wet. I don't know, but like I said it, Dalvin gets popped by Summers. Really good play. It's a third and nine now. Might go with one of those rare scoreless first quarters that we all love to see in the NFL. Just, I mean, the most intriguing thing you could ever have. Why would you want to see scoring? And that is another huge hit. Stevens with the pop. Dalvin can't break a tackle. So it will be a fourth and five punt. First and ten going with the heavy pitch play. And holy crap, we got gaped. And Adams is hurt. Nice. All the Pollard fans are just jumping for joy. Hope you guys are happy. Now we're down to freaking Pollard only. Oh, he's open. That is interesting. Really good play last second to catch it, but that break, he got completely caught. That was rough. I could have threw it earlier, but I just didn't want to throw. You know, the timing could have been so terrible there. Threw it right as he's cutting, and, you know, the, the corner sees it because he's behind the play. And here, oh, my Lord, Pollard just got smashed. Adams is a broken finger, and I think that's actually a massive injury, if I'm not mistaken. That sounds like, because it's one of those injuries that doesn't sound too bad. Oh, look at Pollard. Oh, look at Pollard. Oh, look at Judy. Oh, Judy, come on alive. Had the reboot for the system going there. Finally gets it, but what a play by Pollard. We got to be very careful, though. Pollard, uh, he cannot have too many more touches with the ball consecutively. And I can't get the ball off. Maybe should have taken the fullback there. Didn't really lose too much in the sack, but it's still no, it's five yards. Hey, five yards is five yards. Looking for the slant on the inside to Jalen Rager. And that's exactly where we're going to hit. Jordan Love, perfect throw. And we tried to actually truck with Rager there. I wanted to get the, the first down, but nope. And Pollard, I can't tell. I don't know if this is going to work. Oh, they got us. Okay, in fairness to that play, it actually tricked the hell out of him. He just didn't have the ability to get through for the first down. I thought he was going to get it. He was short. Made me a bad decision. Maybe he should have just ran. I mean, then again, Pollard couldn't get the first down, and it looked like it was going to be guaranteed. So not a bad last-second audible. Uh-oh. 
Stevens, good job. Okay, a little worrisome there. Thought maybe for a second he was going to break it. Already 50 yards in the first quarter alone. Of course, we probably could have the field goal, but it just felt like fourth and inches. Such a wasted opportunity. Terrible tackle by us, but good job by Vildor. Gets aggressive, but it's still a first down. All right, Monty, sit in the middle. Miles off the edge. No, oh my. Oh my, indeed. Okay, good job, Derek, because uh, I'm glad you missed. Stevens. He's going to kill Dalvin one of these times. One of these times, a full-blown murder is going to take place. Which also gives me a question of, what happens if you do murder someone? Are you, like, on the hook for murder? Like, there's probably something in the contract, right? It's like, yeah, you can't die. I mean, you can die. <laughs> Signing a contract isn't going to keep you from death, I'll tell you that. I know that better than anyone. I, I don't, but I, I said it, so I have to stand by it now. Over the middle, somebody killed Dalvin. I mean, he's taking hits. He's just not dying. We'll say their offense, you know, not really having too much of a struggle some time going against us right now. They're they're kind of doing what they want to do. Where Steven's got to go. Oh, Steven's got to go back. Thankfully, we brought the blitz because we may have played a little shallow with Steven's. Trying to sit in as much zone coverage as possible because that is what our guys are best at. Oh, I thought we got that jab. Oh, my I have to show you that again. Oh, that could be a score. What a throw and catch. I need to show you the violence. Like, the, right here, I thought he was in a jab. He, like, absolutely smoke him. He doesn't. But look at that. I'll show you in full regular speed. I mean, that is brutal. Dylan Rager, obviously, we uh, kind of have to have a run like this. Otherwise, it's just not Flyers football. And we try to cheese it with Judy, but... Judy going to get there in time, but really good block on the edge. 20-yard gain. On the run to Knox. It's kind of our fault. I'm glad he got his feet down, but we should have just possessioned the thing. Up the middle, Pollard going to try to get as much as he can. Gets about five or six. Go with the triple option on the left side. I mean, I don't know if they'd be expecting it from the weak side or the short side, I suppose. And the fullback gets a full head of steam, and he's just short of the end zone. What a play call. Great blocking. Good handoff. And he was off. I so desperately want to get this ball into the end zone to him. I really want to. And he does. What a play. I'm actually shocked. Normally the fullback dive dies for us. McDougal deserves it. And he's getting pumped all in. Guess who's fate? Actually, I don't think it is anal zone. All right, 34-yard line. Obviously a running situation because it's a third and one. Everyone get down there, make a play, and okay, dudes. Okay, there's no need to show us up like that. Anthony Sherman, eight-yard rushing touch on a third and one. I mean, that basically made our 25-yard uh, run with our fullback look like nothing because there's it's one thing to get a nice, sneaky 25-yard run with your running back. It's another thing to do it, you know, eight yards on third and one when you're expecting the run. Bringing that pressure, however, it's going to cost us in the secondary. Huge. I mean, these guys are hitting hard. I get it. There's, you know, their hit power isn't really super great, but one of these hits has got to force a fumble. If not, I will be thoroughly surprised, just like I was on that play, as I got absolutely mind effed. My mind has a gigantic hole in it from Pete Carroll's play calling. He actually stuck it in. And look at that. Nice little swat. We weren't going to get the pick there. Barely got our hand in. I don't even know if I've ever seen that angle. He looks like he's flying. <laughs> that, 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 that arm. Like, why is it so far back? I'm so scared. Honestly. Bringing the blitz off the side with Mr. Jair Alexander. Hopefully they don't run it. They do not. We got beat a step. Oh, speaking of beating a step, Ty Summers gets destroyed down to the four, obviously a very tough play for him to make. And he wasn't too far off. But ultimately, it doesn't matter how close you are, this or that, how almost something happened. If it happened, it was a first down. And two-minute warning, Seahawks trying to cheese it. Look at that stadium. That is just good. And it basically makes me like a, a traitor. It's like I'm committing treason for the Packers. Like, I should not like anything about the Seahawks. And that is going to be short. Stevens put us enough force on him to force him out. Second to go from the two now. Dalvin, do you run commit? Yeah, you run commit. You run commit for sure. 
And we do stop him. It's going to be now a third and goal from the two. We'll let the clock run on this one. I, I value our timeout. Actually, no, I don't. I mean, I do. but <laughs> No, I don't value them at all. I promise. We're not going to bring the blitz because I do feel like they're going to throw it here. But we're going to keep Stevens, the run-stopping expert in there. And not expertly done there as we just get outran. Very close. Very close, but doesn't matter. We've been over it. Close doesn't mean anything in this business. Uh-oh. Ooh, good catch by Knox, though. Obviously did not mean to get rid of it that quick. I'm going to take off right away. Jordan Love. That is one beast of a man. Go back with the heavy tight end look. I don't know. I just like the routes that Fant is on. It's just we're not getting the opportunity. I'm just taking that. I mean, it's before halftime. Uh, okay. I mean, really good interception there, Nelson. I will say, it hurt Jordan Love's stat line, as did the other interception. However, there is an opportunity here to get a safety. And we do not squander it. Terrible decision. I get they tried to run it off the left side, and, you know, we did bring everyone on the inside. There was a very big chance for a 99-yard run, but that is just not worth the risk. And maybe tactical, were we? Saying. Definitely not tactical, by the way. <laughs> just just throwing that out there. Rose, not agile at all. Holy crap. Is he a power back? He is kind of big-ish. Going for that look. We're outside. They could see Knox absolutely burn downfield. Probably unlikely. Now that's a bad decision. And it's intercepted as, as it has been all day. Pick number three. Yikes. And it's in the first half only. Well, there goes that amazing season. Just right down the drain from one game. And they had a lot of people open there. They had three wide open players. Go back to man coverage. From the 35 second mark. 13 yards to go. No pressure at all. And good job by Jair to knock that ball out. They're trying to body us up, and it's it's kind of worked. Good win. That will force the ball early, so Dalvin is going to be taken down inbounds in a weird spot on third and nine. Come on, Miles. Give it your all. Thank you for the pressure. They're going to keep it inbounds, and the ball is going to be – I mean, the clock's running. The ball was in play, and they will not get the field goal off. Terrible, terrible last-second decision by the Seahawks. Don't know why you don't kick your field goal there or take the shot to the end zone. Mahomes is smarter than that. Great coding. Uh, I mean, who's uh, what? Of course, looking at the statistics, not great from us at all. I don't even want to see it. I really don't. Going to start us off with a nice halfback stretch. We're going to take this to the left. I really don't like Metcalf's blocking on this one, but well, good decision. Pollard slipped it for about 10. Play action look. Jerry Judy looking pretty prime. And hit as he's thrown. What a catch by Judy, but unfortunately out of bounds. I mean, Jordan Love has been spectacular. It's just, you know, once again, those decisions. I mean, hell, even that one you could debate. Metcalf looks like no one's on him, but they do have that deep corner. You take that every day of the week. That's a linebacker, isn't it? That is pass interference. Excuse me, where's the call? No need to touch him there. Like, <laughs> okay, dude. Knocks to the outside. Not an easy one by any means. Great throw, great catch. First down. It just sucks knowing that we can't get the game back for Jordan. There's no chance he's scoring three touchdowns passing. Nice little throw underneath. Rager knows his game. He's, he's not very agile, but he's got straight line speed. Hit as he's thrown again. Jordan Love delivers another strike for six. First down, anal zone. All right, Pollard, this is all you, buddy. Inside, a really good throw again, and somehow caught by Rager. He's been known to miss those catches in contact, uh, you know, in traffic in the middle of the field, but he holds on there. Last screen pass we ran was pretty successful. Let's see if we can do it again. And unfortunately, Love holds on to it way too long. Go back to the double tight end look. We have the, the backup receivers on the outside end, which is not good. And Love just going to have to take off. 
And he's not going to slide. Takes a very vicious hit for no reason at all. We do have the route to Rager, but we have seen Jerry Judy beat on the inside a few times here. Uh oh. Where to take that shot? And there's a little PI there. I don't know. This is interesting now. I do think it's quite something that they called that PI, which in my opinion probably wasn't. And then they, they missed the earlier one. A little throw to the tight end, and Knox will score. We did have Rager more open, but there was more people that were able to undercut it, so we just didn't risk it. With the triple option from the two-yard line. Don't know if we're going to be able to get the fullback this time, though. And that's... Maybe should have handed the fullback there. I thought maybe we'd get the ball to uh, Pollard quick enough, one-on-one, -on -one, break it outside, but nope. It's going to be a one-point lead rather than a three-point lead. With the press man, we got the blitz coming. One safety over top. Maybe played a little too close to the running back there. Great tackle. Missed hard with Josh Jackson on that one. Vildor with the recovery, though. Probably going to actually run the ball. They kind of abandoned it for a while, which honestly has been their best decision yet because they are just gashing us through the air. It wasn't even our job to cover that with Rice, but we were kind of in the air because we felt it. Don't even know if that's just something you could do, but we, we felt the, the coverage being open. I don't know, dude. Ooh, good decision to back up. I think I think that tight end far left would have been open. I think we've been a little bit too easy on him with these blitzes. I think it's time. Stevens over there. Get the press on the inside. And how do you miss there? And there is an illegal block in the back, I believe, on Mike Gesicki. And we will be accepting that. We obviously should have done way better. We're coming with the blitz again. But still, that's obviously illegal. And Monty Rice gets it. That is not who I wanted to pitch to at all. I wanted to pitch it far and left as I think Jair was open left side and there was no one over there. Monty barely gets the pick, saving the drive completely. I mean, that would have obviously been a lead-changing drive. And here goes Jerry Judy. We're just going to avoid the hit because we've had some injury issues on uh, end arounds and whatnot. It might even be what? No, I don't, I don't think it was. Is that what uh, ended... Hardman's season basically and Judy takes a blunt hit but first down nonetheless Let's see if we can get that look to Metcalf we'll throw that on the run a perfect throw Fant converts for just about 20 love is a monster I mean the guy just gets it he just makes the plays shows up makes the plays Bit of a deep throw and really good swat away. Late read as well. Probably should run the ball. It's probably not a... Nah, they backed him up. Oh, what a move. Oh, did you see the move? The wiggle. It was only a three-yard gain, but it was beautiful. Wide open over the middle. Metcalf's going to take it all the way down to the 30-yard line. A massive first down. We had a couple other guys open, but we're just hoping fan... Nah. Maybe get a stiff arm or something. He doesn't. Inside zone with Pollard. Judy, please take out anal zone. Or not. Oh, my Lord. Pollard not fumbling there is a massive play. And that is a perfect throw to Judy for the first down to the eight-yard line. Potentially the last play of the third. Inside zone. We'll try to just gain as much as we can without, you know, risking it too hard. Judy could score. I don't like it. we got to get rid of it early, and it's going to just lead to a field goal. The Seahawks could win the game with a touchdown. We started their drive with a, a pretty solid, just about first down throw. Monty Rice, Let's see a hit stick. Oh, my. How is... <laughs> oh, and he's still going. Dalvin breaks it for 30 with a backfield attempt by Stevens that just gets thwarted. I'm pretty sure that's a word I heard it once. Monty Rice not in the zone for long there. Ooh, he has that deep. And that is unfortunate. Vildor obviously banging the ground there because he realized maybe a little bit out of position. I thought he had a chance. I really did. I thought he had a chance at that, but kind of played it too, uh, too shallow. And there's a really big pop by uh, Rice, but it's still going to be a first down. 
They're saying, oh, yeah, the season rankings for takeaway is number one. They've got two today. It's like, yeah, but Seahawks in a really good spot to make a play here. Oh, no. And he's just going to catch it for a touchdown. We tried to get in there with Stevens, and Stevens misses. Once again, they're going to take another look at it, but, I mean, this is about as clear-cut as you're going to get. Stevens, he usually makes a pretty good read on the ball, but when he makes a bad play like he did there where he just played the outside receiver too much, he just doesn't have the speed to get back inside, and he's going to get beat nine times out of ten in that look. All right, Metcalf pretty much, like, singled out as, like, the streak receiver today. Pollard right down Main Street. Perfect throw, perfect catch. All the way to the 37-yard line. We got a, a nice little halfback screen, but worrisome as it is. Pollard, uh, if he didn't have to spin for the ball, would have had the speed to get out there, but he couldn't. We lose six. We keep looking too deep, I think. And that's, I mean, not a good throw, but at the end of the day, there's not really a whole lot we could have done there anyways. Knocks down the middle of the field. Looks pretty good here. I'm just saying. I'm just saying to the 19. All right, Pollard on the stretch. Gets a perfect block from the fullback. He's going to fight for the touchdown. Not even close, though, to the 9. Went for the spin. I didn't feel like the juke was going to get us all the way out there, but the spin might have had a chance. And as we now learned, uh, I was uh, what they call wrong. And that's a little overthrown, and that should have been picked. I can't lie. That's a terrible throw. I mean, I'll give him some leniency because, of course, he was on the run fading with a guy in his face, but that is pretty poor. And Pollard is down to the two. This is going to be an interesting play call. Don't want to play too risky with a pass, but at the same time, I think they're going to stop a run call, no? This pitch got us in trouble with Adams here in the red zone. See if Pollard can get anything different out of it. He's going to have to beat one, and he's just too tired to do the job. Stopped at the four. This could be overtime, folks. President didn't try to ice us here. I get, you know, it's not the hardest field goal in the world, but, yeah, I guess you probably don't ice in this situation. You, you hold on to those timeouts. Though they kind of look like they're trying to just go to OT, which is a bit strange, not going to lie. This is very strange, actually. Okay. Two-minute warning, third and what, seven? Third and six. I'm not going to lie, if I'm a Seahawks fan of the game, I'm probably booing in this situation. This is this is wild to me. And Miles is going to be short, but he gets the throw away. Great pressure, and I'd be boo, you know? I mean, this is terrible. Keep stupidly calling read options, but I just know one of these times we're going to burn them. No, we're not. That is thankfully not a fumble. Should have handed it off. I just didn't like the inside look stupid they just know every time it's going to be uh, a read so we just gotta avoid the play i suppose and i was going to score with rager instead they're gonna get the sack which just saved them the game i think now you played smart probably handed off to pollard unless metcalf is wide which just wouldn't make any sense for him to be this looks pretty good i will say who for a second i thought he was gone nice little run to get us out of the you know issue area Going to pump this thing probably inside their 10. And the ball is going to be out at the two-yard line. We're bringing a blitz, but we do have Stevens over top just in case. And Dalvin barely avoids it. Down to the one-yard line. I'm calling a timeout now. Risky, but I think it's smart. I don't want a full-on blitz, but we're going to bring some linebackers up. Even if it looks obvious, we just can't get caught over top. I'll take overtime if we have to. And Dalvin is going to bust it. Like I said, even when we knew, you know, there was a chance he was going to run it, even the run game kind of busted free. And we were afraid of them passing. And they're going to go for a play action. And Mahomes is going to take a sack from, Miles, uh, from Monty. I don't understand that play at all. Overtime. Okay. Definitely a super happy, stoked to edit this one. This might even be a standalone Saturday upload day. I don't even know. We'll see. Uh, we're consistent across the board. I mean, first quarter was just terrible. Both teams were bad, but we got points in every quarter. I'm going to go with Tails. Tails never fails except for here in a huge situation. Come on, man. 
Bringing Stevens down a little bit. Second and four to start overtime. There's only six minutes in overtime, so we uh, we might be in a little bit of trouble here. I mean, we definitely are in a bit of trouble because they're already down to the 42-yard line. We're running a proper blitz here. Obviously, we're believing in uh, Jair to win his one-on-one -on -one as usual. And we miss hard there. He slips away all the way down to the 26. This could be a, this could be a loss. It's a huge game for the Seahawks. Got a couple of linebackers in, but it's fine. We do have uh, very talented linebackers that are fast. We push our man off the route. Huge hit by Jair. Oh, I thought he was just going to let him catch it. He tried to go for the pick and missed. Good last second recovery to pop that out. And now he is in the zone. Running man coverage. After seeing that, that in the zone play. And how? Does he catch that ball? How? Miles off the edge. Insta win. Gotta, gotta finish there. Gotta finish. Come on. Three yard gain to the 11. Still plenty of time for us to get a chance. You just gotta actually allow the offense to have a chance. All right, boys. Stay close to the line. No mess ups. And we're stuck on the D line. Really good job, Burke Irving. Great step up. Number 19 has had the ball knocked out quite a bit today. Underneath, and he finds his man to the two. This is not good. And the worst part is they're uh, they're not actually running the ball wholeheartedly, so we don't know. I'm <sighs> run commit is rough. We run commit, and even then, it's barely enough. Down to the one. Come on, boys, win the matchup. Let's go. This is for all the marbles. And they walk in. For the game-winning overtime touchdown, they win the game 27-21. to What a damn game. And that's all I can say. What a damn game. Really, really fortunate. Tipped interceptions they had the game, and it was just enough. If we would have went for the field goal instead of that fourth and inches play for the fake, which Tyree should have had, he had the look, full head of steam with his huge frame, should have easily bowled forward for that first down, but he didn't get it. We would have, you know, avoided overtime and would have won the game, but hindsight is 2020, and I did not say hindsight, I said hindsight. I did this time at least. <laughs> and Seattle gets kind of the upset victory. I mean, it's not even kind of, it's definitely an upset victory. Looking at the stat line, Jordan Love, he played well. It's just the you know the decisions we had were just terrible decisions, and of course, unfortunately. A lot of deflection picks. Uh, of course, rushing, not a super great game. Adams ran one time and got hurt. Uh, receiving, nothing really special. Rager was decent. He had over 100 total yards on the game. Uh, defensively now, really lack of consistency. There was no coverage at all. Pass rush was terrible as usual. And uh, our run defense was just as bad. Overall, we just didn't play like the Flyers team that we know we are. So, Mr. Jonathan Coachman. At the midway point, your team's in a good spot. How far do you think this team can go? It's a dangerous game to look, uh, start looking ahead. So right now, these guys need to worry about winning each week. I think winning each week. Okay, man, that's cool. I'm never answering the media ever again. Uh, big injury, injury decision. Uh, I did not even look to see if uh, Adams is hurt long term. He is not, thankfully. If broken finger isn't the same as broken thumb. Uh, looking at McCole Hardman, they want to bring him back early, but there's really just no point. I mean, what is Denver? 3-5. and five. Even if they were really good, there's just no point. We will make the decision to start Jalen Rager, though, because he'll get you know extra XP anyways. But that's pretty much it. It was a very exciting week. Unfortunately, unfortunately we lose, and everyone else in the division wins, except for the Niners, who might have actually played the Cardinals. Maybe that's what it was. I don't know. But Niners... It's not their season. Best they can do is nine and seven, which just isn't going to be. A, it's not going to be good enough, and they got to play us still. So very unlikely. But the Cardinals giving us a run for our money, and of course the Seahawks keeping themselves alive with that victory just last week. Anyways, like I said, I don't know if this is the only video today or not, but hopefully, if it is, if it isn't, it was a good one, and hopefully you enjoyed. If you liked the video, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new, follow me on Twitter, Jerome P. Care. Check out the second channel, P. Care Plays. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see ya.